Hi, uh, as you know, uh, my name is Pete Stanford, and I have a, an interest in the older 1960s, 50s vintage receivers. Um, this particular receiver is a Raykel RA1218, uh, and uh, it was one of the early attempts from Raykel to produce a HF receiver with a digital readout. And uh, as you see, one three switch on. It's a um, it's a readout which is based upon Nixie tubes, and um, just turn that down a little bit. It uh, came out mid to late uh, 1960s, from what I can make out. Um, was in uh, manufacturing till early 1970s. It was a follow-on from another smaller 2U high unit with a digital readout. There was even a further derivative of this particular unit, which had a phase lock system, which allowed um, a dynamic per frequency, analog VCO, and then a, a lock a lock feature, which uh, I need to lock in. Anyway, uh, without much further ado, I'll just give a bit of a tour of the receiver. Um, it's got the usual uh, on-off switch with all the various AGC modes. So short, medium, long. There's a cowl. You can check the BFO out. And um, generally, leave on medium or long, long for SSB. Um, still has the a little peak at the front there. Being a transistorized set of this vintage, it uh, did suffer overload. So they uh, that little pre-select peak uh, on the front here, which is presetted in a number of uh, octave. Um, and pass tunable filters. Um, of course, in the middle here we have the usual RFAF meter, so you can select to work out the uh, actual RF incoming signal. Um, going further over to the right here, there's an IF bandwidth selection, which in this particular receiver has uh, has all five filters fitted. Uh, normally they only had three, uh, and this uh, and the smallest is a 0.2, so it's 200 hertz uh, filter for CW. And uh, just completing that, there's a BFO during the back here, and obviously the mode, the AM upper lower sideband and CW. Um, the other two controls under here, the RF gain, which uh, with AGC on is not effective. And uh, of course there's a normal audio gain here on the right here. Uh, now right in the middle here there's a little fine tune, which um, there's a an extra button on the digital dial here which calls up, you know, 10 hertz, and you can actually adjust it around a little bit to get it exactly right. Um, probably useful more for, for, for data modes and tuning in FSK. I think most of that's covered. Around on the very left here, by the way, is a uh, an RF attenuator, pretty much a, uh, a requirement for some of the heavier, heavier coming coming signals. But it's the afternoon here in Brisbane, and I've just got a whip outside onto this receiver, and I'll just see if uh, 20 meters is a little bit open, so I might just have a quick tune around, just to give an idea how the receiver performs on, on 20 meters. So I haven't uh, done any other change yet. So we're on upper sideband. We've peaked the front end. And we'll just have a tune around so that's the in VFO here. Interesting feel. There's no flywheel to it. It's it's quite a light touch for the VFO, but it's intriguing to uh, see the Nixies all move around. And this is one of the um, the reasons I bought it. It's the only receiver I've ever had with Nixie tubes, and uh, it's uh, it's rather interesting to look at. It's kind of cool. It's got that uh, I guess you call it steampunk look about it. The interesting thing to note is, with upper and lower sideband, you'll see the frequency display doesn't change, but actually it's kicking in an offset for a, um, a carry. There's only one crystal filter in the unit, it's 3 kilohertz for, for single sideband at least, and um, it switches a bit high and low, so it's 1.5 kilohertz high or 1.5 kilohertz low depending on the sideband. Um, so currently the actual carrier frequency for, for this SSB signal will be uh, 2060, so it'll be uh, 206 uh, kilohertz. I'll find everything else interesting there. A little bit quieter than that. Of course you can call in the last last digit and peek it right on. Now what's very interesting about this particular set, and I have owned some of the let me just turn the volume. I have owned some of the uh, 
1217s, 128s in the past, um, and found that the VFOs tended to, to drift or at least jump quite a bit. Um, and it seems to be pretty much uh, the word of it. A lot of guys on the internet seem to say, oh, look, these, these VFOs, they don't, they're unstable, worked on them. Me too, I've, I've pulled off, stripped them down, tried to uh, rebuild them to get them to be stable as. But um, this set, out of the box, untouched, is probably one of the most stable transistorized VFOs I've ever used. Um, it, it hardly drifts more than but five to ten cycles, and uh, it's not synthesized. It's a free running VCO um, on this side, and uh, this calls up just one megahertz decade steps, as you can see there. Um, so it's it's unusual, and I'm not quite sure why. And I, I'd like to go in and find out why, but I uh, I know that if I start opening up the uh, VCO, I'd probably uh, open myself up to damaging whatever it is that's inside the box, which the other boxes have let out. Um, so it's it's a bit of a conundrum. Um, I think most people agree that it hasn't been regarded as a particular stable receiver. However, this, whether it's just serendipitous, is very, very stable indeed. And um, I can leave it on this frequency, switch it off, come back a day later, and bang, she's up within a, a couple of hertz of the, uh, the setting. Anyway, uh, let me just uh, have a bit more of a tune around. Does have uh, rather nice audio tone. Um, the AM again is one of the best recovered AMs I've ever heard on set. It's similar to the uh, 1217 I showed uh, on a previous video. Uh, the, the AM is just spectacularly um, clear and uh, very nice. In fact, I'll uh, just give it a bit of a tune up to the. So we'll tune up to Radio New Zealand, which is, I think, still on at. Uh, it says. I don't think it is actually. Let's just have a look. No, it's, I think it's shifted its frequency. There's a number of peaks on the RF tune which um, can give it a bit tricky to find the right peak, I have noticed. stations up there. It does shift in the afternoon to a uh, different frequency. Um, this sounds like a, a mix. There's also Radio National Australia. Yes, that's, that's what we're doing. This is quite a strong signal within Australia itself and you can see me peaking it here. It's, it's a very strong signal. So it's uh, sports this afternoon. And I'd say it's a very, very clear, very clear audio. And um, I think just to round it off a bit, I'll have a quick listen to the air band, see if there's anything coming through on the um, on the 8 megahertz band. Hang on, where are we now? Right, the side band, turn that up a bit. Bring the filter back to three. We'll try um, the South, South Pacific channels 8867 so if it's 8867 then we have to uh, go a little bit higher somewhere in there and I'll just peek that So we're listening now to 8867, and um, it's slightly uh, high frequency. The receiver once uh, received had a, um, a number of problems. Um, the AGC, uh, let's turn down a little bit. The AGC was 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 not working. Um, fundamentally, a lot of electrolytic capacitors on the AGC line had uh, gone leaky. Um, the um, 
the counter wasn't working and uh, that needed a bit of uh, bit of TLC to work out what was going on there but it, um, it came good after I uh, pinpointed a couple of bad uh, counters and um, just recently the fast warm-up oscillator inside which is uh, the 5 megahertz reference for this guy um, packed up the uh, the heater circuit um, shorted with the mister and uh, taken out all the basically the internal regulator um, and a bit of rework on that is it's got it all working again and just yesterday I realigned the uh, all the oscillators internally to be uh, bang on frequency so um, it's now reading as it should um, it receives as it should and it's as sensitive as it should be I had hoped we'd hear another signal by now but uh, Yeah. Let's just round it off by one last listen on 20 meters. So again, we'll clock 20 meters. We'll drop down into the band. It's time to peak a little bit. Let's try again. Didn't quite catch that. Italian or French? Let's see if we've got anybody else on there. Find if you zero it. Just a little bit cool, I think. Let's just try some else. We might find someone else up there. Just make going to go. So it's California, um, US, and we threw into Brisbane this afternoon. It's about um, 4.30 local time. I'll probably just peek it a little bit more. One of the other features is there is a frequency lock on this guy, so you can you can lock the beef VFO to a mechanically lock it that is to a, a channel. It's another little station there. A lot of birdies from the uh, computers and uh, local urban noise. All in all, it's, um, it's pretty sensitive, and I actually uh, enjoy using enjoy using it. Okay. I think that's probably enough to be uh, going on with. Anyway, so this is the Raykel 1218. Um, receiver of the, uh, of the 60s. So let's just see if we can try a little CW work here. Uh, I just want to show off the, uh, the filtering. So we'll go through to um, CW. We'll offset the BFO just a shade. We'll bring it down a bit.
Just a bit too sharp there, I think. Let's try a bit more. Okay, let's leave it 